Hello there, we're going to do a couple of instructional videos on receiving the 2010 dye sublimation printer package. A lot of what we say here does actually apply to many other printers that we sell as well. Um, so if we just take a quick look at the printer, we've turned it on, we've put some cartridges in. When you receive it, you will receive the printer with some Epson original cartridges. They come packaged and sealed like this. Also you will receive four refillable cartridges. They look like this. What we want you to do is to set your printer up and we have other videos explaining how to do that and we want you to install the manufacturer's original cartridges that came with the printer. The reason we do this is to allow you to get familiar with the printer and make sure there are no major issues with the printer before we switch it for dye sublimation. Now, as I say, we've put in some compatible cartridges in here. We call them test cartridges. Uh, there's a reason for that. You'll find information on that on our websites. So what we're looking to do is to put the cartridges in, run the printer, set the printer up, do a couple of test prints, and I'm now going to go to my computer over here and send a nozzle test through. The idea of a nozzle test is it prints out all the colours and it tells us whether there are, there are any unbroken lines. So I'm just going into printing preferences, maintenance, nozzle check, and it politely asks me to wait and then do I really want to print? Yes I do. So let's have a look at that. This tells us the state of the printer, the cartridges, is ink flowing and of course stupidly I haven't put any paper in yes so let's pop some paper in all you got here is a light that's flashing up saying there's an error press that and as you can see that gets you going immediately so not so stupid really but these things happen just wanted to show you that but there we go what you've got is a printout and you can see that you have all the various colors exactly as they should be and you can see how many prints the printer's done etc now actually it's a good thing we've done this because there is a if you look at that piece of paper um, end on you can see that it's bent that's due to it being coated on one side out uncoated on another what we need to do is just to rectify that I would take the paper and just fold it in the opposite direction and pop it back then you're good to go now loading the paper You've got a cream side and you've got a very white side. It's very difficult to show you this on a video. What you've also got is a very smooth side and a rougher side. You put it on the smooth side facing outward. And that's us good to go. So I'm going to take that paper away now. And we're going to pop some different paper in. Again. Looking at it, smooth, rough, very white side, creamier side. Let's bob that one in there. And by the way, if you're putting a lot of paper in, it's always good to fan the paper first. And all you would do to do that is this. And as you can see, the paper separates. And you can also do it in the other direction. The paper separates. There we go. That breaks any cold burn weld and gets you going. Now let's go over and print that again. Okay, nozzle check. Please wait. And I'm sorry if the video goes on. The idea is to show in depth what to expect when you receive a printer. If you know some of this, apologies, just go to the bits that you do know. 
or you don't know. And there we go. As you can see, we've got a very clean sheet of paper. You can see the nozzles are all firing up because the colours are absolutely perfect on that and those colours are there. Yellow on dye sublimation printing is very, very faint and sometimes you have to look very hard for it. There's a number of bits of information we can also get from this, as you can see, from a nozzle test. And it's not applicable to every printer. It's just to the 2010 and one or two other models. It tells us when the printer was set up, how many pages have been done. It gives us the firmware versions. It also gives us the printer serial number. So I'm hoping that that's helped you understand how to set your printer up when you receive it, put the right cartridges in, the genuine cartridges, Put the paper in correctly, check the paper to make sure it's not curled. If it is, roll it the opposite way to combat that. And then, if you do forget to put paper in, how simple it is to clear the fault just by pressing this button. That's the end of this phase of video. Now we're going to get on to filling cartridges and we're going to get on to installing the refillable cartridges. So let's go straight on to that. I've got a yellow cartridge here, refillable cartridge. And if we look at the cartridge, top to bottom, you've got the filling bung, you've got an air bung, and you've got the outlet bung. Now this is a used cartridge. So what you would normally receive is a cartridge with a complete seal on it. And by inserting the cartridge, it breaks the seal and feeds ink into the printer. Now, this air bung is quite important. If you receive cartridges with the air bung in, you must remove that air bung before you install the cartridges. The reason being, for every drop of ink that comes out the bottom here um, to be used by the printer, there has to be an appropriate volume of air, a drop of air, the equivalent. If you don't have that, air circulating through and the air replacing the liquid that comes out or the ink that comes out what you get is a vacuum and you cannot get ink out the cartridge now we've received several printers back in the past where customers have just installed the cartridges not taken the bungs out caused a vacuum and they've come back and said it's faulty i'm hoping that by showing and pointing this out that breaks that cycle and gives a better understanding of what a refillable cartridge is and how to use it. Let's not waffle on too much. Let's go ahead and fill that and then we'll put the refillable cartridges in. So there's our cartridge. And I'm sorry, I'm also doing this cack handed. Normally I would be in a different position to do this. There's our bottle of ink. And by the way, this is a bottle of ink tech ink, what they call sublin over ink. We also sell Splash Jet, we also sell our own brand which is Photo Plus. All three are very, very good inks. So, uh, syringe, using a syringe with a long needle, we would go in and a typical syringe of this size is 10ml. So, I'm going to take about 8ml of ink. And we're good to go. And again, as I said, you've got your filling bung. You remove your filling bung. And you remove your air bung. Well, let's leave the air bung in for now. And let's just show you it can be filled without the air bung in. Pop your needle in. And you're just gently injecting there. I'm going to bring it closer to the camera so you can see what's going on. Really exciting, I know, but at least you get a feel for what's going on. And I don't know if you can see that. Ah, there. It just completed it. There's a dome there. We need to make sure when we put the cartridges in that we don't have any air bubbles underneath that dome. And I'll show you how you make sure of that shortly. You may just be able to see it there. Okay, what we're going to do is take our needle out. By the way, these are the needles that we supply are flat needles. I'm not going to hold this because I don't want ink dripping too far over. But if you look, there's no point on that needle. So they are perfectly safe. 
Let's move that out of our way, declutter, and let's always, whenever you're filled, you're always going to get a little bit of ink somewhere, just a little cloth, and I would recommend you do this over a sink. And that's it. Then what you're looking to do, if you look at that air, just give it a shake. That's pretty good. And off we go. So, I filled three other cartridges earlier. Blue Peter moment, I guess. This is what we did earlier. And I'm now going to take this out and show you how you replace these. We know the printer's working fine because we've done the nozzle test. So we're good. We take out the original cartridges or any other cartridge you've got in. And all you would do is hold this in for up to 10 seconds. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And I would expect then... There we go, we've got movement. Now, sometimes when the cartridges are full, it just tucks itself back under, which is a bit of a pain. Other times it will park, as it has done then. If it does tuck, keep tucking itself back under, and it doesn't give you access to the cartridges, turn the printer off. Turn it back on again. And when it's working, pull the power lead out the back of the printer, Pull this power lead out the back of the printer so that this carriage stops and you can freewheel it and then you can get them out that way. So let's take these cartridges out. I have a plastic bag here to try and protect things so if it rustles, apologies. Now before I put the new cartridges in, I'm going to take you through a memory reset procedure and when we restart the printer and that will include taking the power lead at the back when we restart the printer I will also show you how the printer identifies a cartridge that's empty or faulty so let's turn the printer off the idea of this video is to be as in-depth as possible and we are putting it out fairly urgently to overcome one or two issues that we're getting with customers who are not actually reading the um, instructions that we send. We will be redoing this a lot more professionally. So there we go. The printer's off. The cartridges are out. What we're going to do is turn that printer around. And we're going to pull the power lead out the back. That's out the back. Now I'm going to leave that for about, you can get away with 10 seconds, but I like to leave it for about 30 seconds whilst we wait. What am I doing? On this cartridge, you've got a chip. Now that chip stores information. It tells a printer about the cartridge, what printers it should fit in terms of the serial number of the chip or the models of the chip so that it can work within that printer. Now, as you print, the printer sends information back and forwards to the chip. It reads the chip to say, yes, I've got ink in, you can go ahead and print. After it's printed, it sends back information to the chip, which is stored on the chip, and said, I've used so many dots of ink. The chip builds that up, and then it will show it as empty. When it's used X amount of whatever X is, drops of ink, then it will report back to the printer that it's empty and it cannot print anymore. What we're doing here is by removing all four cartridges, taking the power lead, we're breaking the cycle of the printer storing the information and remembering, the up, I believe it's up to the last three sets of chips. So that's all we're doing, we're doing a hard memory reset on the printer so it doesn't think that this set of cartridges is still in. It, 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 we're telling it not to read those old cartridges basically so let's go back I'm going to go in front of the camera and put the lead back in there we go so the memory reset procedure would be take the cartridges out as I did then turn the printer off and pull the power lead out to reverse that, you put the power lead in, still no cartridges in, no cartridges in the carriage. 
and then we'll turn it on and the printer will moan at us that there are no cartridges and it does that in a fairly specific way which I will show you okay it's reporting that it's not happy we've got an error light and on the, where this error light is we've got an ink drop icon and we've got a page icon it's reporting it on the bottom icon which is the ink drop so we know we we have a bit of a problem so let's press our button and see what it's telling us what it's telling us is this cartridge which happens to be the black cartridge slot it's either empty or there's a fault or there's no cartridge in there we know there's no cartridge in there what I would expect to do for it to do now is go into each of these slots and report that there's an issue. Um, I'm going to tilt the printer and maybe pull it forward to see... I should have foreseen that happening, shouldn't I? Let's see if we can show you the pointer. I think you can. There you go. All right, let's get that back down. And let's press our button again. There you go. Next one. No cartridge or it's empty. No cartridge or it's empty. No cartridge or it's empty. Now it's demanding the cartridges. We've cleared the memory. And what we're going to do now is we're going to bob in our refillable cartridges. Give them a shake. And remember, the air bung, you take it out. So that's what it should look like when it goes in. I didn't check the TV screen, I hope I showed that, I'll do it again. The next one is a yellow cartridge, the one we filled. Again, give it a shake. Air bung. I checked on the screen that time. We'll take that out. That's what it should look like. The air bung out. And in it goes. Next one's magenta, so let's do it in order. There we go, again, the air bung, take the air bung out. Oh, give it a shake. Don't have to go crazy with it. Cyan, take the air bung out. Give it a shake. Not very energetic, but it does the job. Did you notice the light goes straight out? So let's press the light. It's now going to read those cartridges and if it likes what it sees, it'll accept them. If it doesn't, it'll go to that pointer. There we go. Now it's reporting a problem. You can see that here. What we would do is let's find out what that problem is. It's reporting that the black cartridge it doesn't recognise. What you would do there is we sell cartridges with different type of chips and I'm sorry to have to deviate here. We sell cartridges with auto reset chips or we can sell them with one time only chip. I know these are one time only chips and what you would do on that is you would reset it. Now I've got a chip resetter here. Excuse my cup of coffee. Long video, so I need some refreshment. Now I can see that the customers move this about. I just did that because I want to see how this should relate and it should be like that. There we go, I've set that. And we would take the black cartridge out and we would pop it in there. Just bring it down. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to go to the other side to see if you can get a better 
and I can't see the TV so there we go we're gonna do that that and it's not setting that chip is it and that's gonna be a problem there we go it's reset it you should be able to see the green there I'm ever so sorry but I'm the wrong way so let's pop that in and see if it clears the fault. It may, it may not. If it doesn't, we're going to need a different cartridge. It's always good when it sometimes goes wrong. I didn't expect that to happen because it allows us to show you, the customers, what to expect and how to get around it. There we go. That's a bonus. That seems to have all been accepted and because it wanted to mess us around as printers do we've been able to show you a couple of things to clear a couple of problems so that is a bonus now what I would do at this stage is go to my computer and we will do videos showing you screenshots of this and we will also put those up on the website but they're not ready just yet so please just go with this for now I would go in and I would want to do a quick head clean. Now it comes up and says it looks like you are using non-genuine ink cartridges. We know that. We are going to ask it to continue. Excuse me. And then we're going to start and we're going to do a head clean. <coughs> That's going to take us a couple of minutes. And what it's doing is it's moving ink fast through the printer all the tubes in all the various galleries and it's replacing what we want to do in this instance is replace that desktop ink with dye sublimation ink we're also going to print a test print and I'm going to go and find that on the screen now I should have done that before in our technical file and we'll get that ready to print and what that will also do is help us in this process of getting us converted from desktop ink to sublimation ink, sublimation printing. Just bear with me if I go quiet for a second, I need to just find, and apologies, I really should have got this up on the screen before I started. Tech file. All oh, and four test pages. Oh, yeah. oh, that's difficult. My goodness, we're organised. Again, as I say, we are going to do a lot of screen captures to show you, and it will be a video to show you what I've just done there, and your settings and everything else. So, in, if in, as an interim, give us a call if you watch the video and you need a bit more information, but it will be done fairly quickly. There we go. The cartridges are swapped over, we've done a head clean, now we're going to do a nozzle test and let's just see what's going on here. Here we go. Right, it just told it to print. This is where you hope from my point of view, that um, we've swapped over, the ink's working, flowing through, and we get a clear nozzle test. There we go, perfect. Now, I was wrong earlier when I pointed out that sublimation ink on the yellow, you couldn't see it. Of course, we were looking at desktop ink, so apologies for that. You're now looking at a sublimation ink. I think you can see it's just a little bit harder to see the yellow the magenta black and cyan okay but as you can see there everything's clear and we've effectively converted this to a sublimation printer now what we're going to do is one last thing we like to make certain that we get all that desktop ink out and all we would do if you ask us if you need one we can send you a test sheet 
with four colours on it and we do three prints of that. So let's do that without further ado. Um, sorry, as I've got older I need to shut up sometimes and think. Ah, there we go. Right. Um, printer. Model. set your properties. This is a test sheet. Just set your properties to up some map and high quality. That will push more ink through. Go and print. We have so many different versions of this printer on here and I may well have selected the wrong one there. I'm going to go and select a different version, iteration of the printer. Epson map. I. Okay. And print. Ah! Yes, I apologies, I selected the wrong printer. As you do. Now whilst it's printing this, I'm going to clean the top up top of the desk up of the bits that we really that we've discussed and we don't need to deal with anymore because we're going to get the old press out shortly and uh, make them up so let's lose those cartridges let's lose those genuines we don't need them those are bottom inks. If you declutter, um, less chances of an issue. There's not a lot I can say whilst it's doing this. We just... And again, I apologies, but... Apologies if you find this boring, but I wanted you to see the thing in full and you can always shift to the bits you want to see. You know, fast forward and all the rest of that. All we're doing by doing this, and I'm going to have two more done afterwards, and I am deliberately going to leave the video recording, so... Once you've seen what we're doing, it may be appropriate to go and get a cup of tea or something. I, I've got to print three just to clear it through so that for the purpose of this video, I can make a mark and you can see some kind of finished result. By the way, you can ask us to send you this sheet. Or you can make your own. I'm actually favouring, I think what I'm going to do is print this one, show you what I've done, and I'm going to turn things off and then I'll go through and print the other couple of three sheets because I, I just can't see the benefit in running the video um, for three or four of these things, yes? If I was you, I wouldn't be watching it. I think you can see it coming through. All we're doing is printing some blocks of ink. and They are the correct colours. It's, it's a full black, it's a version of the yellow and it's a version of cyan and magenta. And what we want to do is to fire those particular inks in through the nozzles. And there'll always be a little bit of mixing, colour mixing, to create the colours. Because there will be colour differences. But for most part, this should fire up and use up the correct colour inks and put them on this paper. Uh, again, I've said that wrong. You're using the actual magenta, cyan, yellow and black in larger proportions. You may have other little bits of other ink mixed in to create the colours because of the colour differences that you see on your screen which are sent to the printer. 
That's a whole different subject and I'm not going to get into that. They call it profiles, ICC profiles. There we go, I think you can see what we've done. Ignore the old company logo. When the company was first started, it was home media, it still is really, but we've just rebranded to hobby print, which is more appropriate to what we do. So, there we go there. Right, as I say, I'm going to turn the recording off now, and I'm going to do a couple more prints, and then we'll come back on, and we'll look at making them up, printing something out, and going from there.